Chandra Prabhu, you're recording? Yeah, I knew it was coming. So we're reading the last uh, last verse from the Sri Shopanishad, verse number 18. And um, we'll just do as we usually do, one, one paragraph each. I'll read the Sanskrit and then... Um, and then Madhuha Prabhu and Vitali Nita Prasad Atavi we can. So Agni Naya Supataraya Asman Vishvani Deva Vanunani Vidvan Yud Yasmaj Juhuranam Eno Buyishtam Te Nama Uktim Videma. Translation O oh my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances falling on the ground at your feet. Oh, my Lord, please lead me on the right path to reach you. And since you know all that I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins so that there will be no hindrance to my progress. Let me read that again. Oh, my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh, omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances falling on the ground at your feet. Oh, my Lord, please lead me on the right path to reach you. And since you know all that I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins so that there will be no hindrance to my progress. So, does uh, uh, Madhu Haprabhu, you want to read the, the first Paragraph of the purport. Can, can you share your screen? Yes. Oh, change layout. Okay, let me see. Oh, you can't see with, with the way. No, that's fine. The, 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 it's a different page you went to, right? You. No, that's fine. I, I can read it. I can read it. Let me get it closer. Yeah, I can read it. Uh, poor, poor, by Srila Prabhupada. By surrendering to the Lord and praying for his costless mercy, the devotee can progress on the path of complete self-realization. The Lord is addressed as fire because he can burn anything to ashes, including the sins of the surrendered soul. As described in the previous mantras, the real or ultimate aspect of the Absolute is his feet as the personality of Godhead and his impersonal Brahmajyoti feature is a dazzling covering over his face. <clears throat> Critic activities or the Karma Kanda path self-realization is the lowest stage in this endeavor as soon as such activities even slightly deviate from the regulative principles of the Vedas they are transformed by karma or act against the interest actor. Such big karma is enacted by the illusion living in by the illusion living entity simply for sense gratification, and the such activities become hindrances on the path of self-realization. Uh, want me to continue? No, no, let's uh, that was good. Let's let's ask um <laughs> Blake. Well, like self realization is possible in the human form of wait, life, wait, 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 but wait. not in other forms. Wait, wait, no, let's let's ask someone else. Let's ask someone else. Maduha Prabhu. Mm -hmm. Let's ask someone else. Uh Blake Prabhu. <laughs> I'm joking. Blake is driving. <laughs> So how about Nitai Prasad Prabhu? Are you are you are you available? Yes, Prabhu, I can read. Okay. Self-realization is possible in the human form of life, but not in other forms. There are eight million four hundred thousand species or forms of life, of which the human form, qualified by Brahminical culture, presents the only chance to obtain knowledge of transcendence. Brahminical culture includes truthfulness, sense control, forbearance, simplicity, full knowledge, and full faith in God. It is not that one simply becomes proud of his high parentage. Just as being born the son of a big man affords one a chance to become a big man, 
So being a born the son of a Brahmana gives one a chance to become a Brahmana. But such a birthright is not everything. For one still has to attain the Brahmanical qualifications for himself. As soon as one becomes proud of his birth as the son of a Brahmana and neglects to acquire the qualifications of a real Brahmana, he at once becomes degraded and falls from the path of self-realization. Thus, his life's mission as a human being is defeated. In the Bhagavad Gita 6.41-42, stroke 42, we are assured by the Lord that the Yoga Bharatas also is fallen prashta, from the... Prashta. Brashtas, excuse mm -hmm. me. Yoga Brashtas, or souls fallen from the path of self-realization, are given a chance to rectify themselves by taking birth either in the families of good brahmanas or in the families of rich merchants. Such births afford higher chances for self-realization. If these chances are misused due to illusion, one loses the good opportunity of human life afforded by the Almighty Lord. So let's, the regulative principle. Wait, 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 wait. So let's let's go to six forty one. I have six forty one here, and maybe Atavi Krishna Prabhu can can read the the translation and the purport, because you know Prabhupada talks about like the fallen, you know, the the the, the person who hasn't attained perfection in spiritual life, right? The yoga brashta, fall someone who has fallen away from yoga, basically. And and so what happens in their next life? Well, here we go. It takes birth in. So let's go to let's go to this series of six forty one and six forty two. So if 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 Atavi Prabhu, if you're ready, you can read to us six forty one, which is here in the shared. Uh... Yeah. Okay, Prabhu. Prapya punja kritam lokam ushitwa shaswata sama suchinam shrimatam gehe jogo brasto bijayate. The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy. You can read the two Pur short paragraphs. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The unsuccessful yogis are divided into two classes. One is fallen after very little progress and one is fallen after long practice of yoga. The yogi who falls after a short period of practice goes to the higher planets where pious living entities are allowed to enter. After prolonged life there, he is sent back again to this planet to take birth in the family of a righteous Brahmana, Vaishnav, or, a, or of aristocratic merchants. The real purpose of yoga practice is to achieve the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness. But those who do not persevere to such an extent and fall due to material allurements are allowed by the grace fail. of the Lord. They fail. Oh, and fail due to material allurements are allowed by the grace of the Lord to make full utilization of their material propensities. And after that, they are giving opportunities to live prosperous lives in righteous or aristocratic families. Those who are born in such families may take advantage <coughs> of the facilities and try to elevate themselves to full Krishna consciousness. So can we can we sort of refer maybe to children born in, in the movement as belonging sort of to that category? Yeah. Yes. And yeah, isn't it? Okay, so that's 641 and now 642 um who hasn't read yet uh devaki nanan prabhu if you're available for verse 642 that's right here on the board i mean on the square atava yoginam eva kule bhavati di matam eta di dur lavataram Loke janma yad idrisham. Isn't the dot supposed to be under the M on Taram instead of above? Anyway. I don't know. Or 
I see that a lot. That's a different coding system. The one that we're supposed to use, IAST, has the dot on the bottom. Anyway, if, if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Uh, or, so in other words, if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly, certainly such a birth is rare in this world. Would you would you be kind enough to read us the purport? Birth in a family of yogis or transcendentalists, those with great wisdom, is praised herein because the child born in such a family receives spiritual impetus from the very beginning of his life. It is especially the case in the Acharya or Goswami families. Such families are very learned and devoted by tradition and training, and thus they become spiritual masters. In India, there are many such Acharya families, but they have now degenerated due to insufficient education and training. By the grace of the Lord, there are still families that foster transcendentalists generation after generation. It is certainly very fortunate to take birth in such families. Fortunately, both our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Goswami Maharaj, and our humble self, had the opportunity to take birth in such families by the grace of the Lord. And both of us were trained in the devotional service of the Lord from the very beginning of our lives. Later on, we met by order of the transcendental system. I love this sentence. We met by the order of the transcendental system. Can we spend a few minutes on that? Because that's like Prabhupada's poetry right here. And But theologically speaking, what's he referring to? The order of the transcendental system, like the, you know, the, the way the guru and the disciple meet, right? What, what's this order of the transcendental system? I mean, we could say one thing that comes to my mind is, okay, it's by the arrangement of Paramatma, right? Who's the soul, super soul in everyone's heart. But does anyone have another uh, take on this beautiful sentence? We met by the order of the transcendental system. Well, it, it says that uh, that everything is already programmed, isn't it, by the Lord? So, by the uh, let's say by your pre previous pious activities that you have done or that we have done, somehow or another, we become in contact again with the spiritual master, or we start or spiritual career, just just to say that, uh, by, the, by the pious activities, by the mercy of Krishna, just as Prabhupada stated in the first two lines of his uh, purport of the previous verse 18, in which he says that it, everything is done by the mercy of the Lord. So that's how you would interpret that word, transcend, the order of the transcendental system. Is the, is the mercy of Krishna only. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now we're back back at our at, at, at our purport here for for 18. And, um, but, but, can, I, can I can I add something to it? Yes, that yes. You, you, you made me thought about it. Uh, because you mentioned before is that you said uh, can we, um, what did you say? You said that can we, uh, <laughs> the ch you were talking about the children born in this, in this movement. Yeah. And you said something that can we equate that to the children born in this movement, but at the same time, uh, we know by all the, at least some of us that, kind of came into this movement in the early, late 70s, 80s, early 80s, uh, that most of the devotees that were born in this movement, a lot of them, 90% of them, they just didn't continue with 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 his, with his their spiritual uh, quest because of situations that happened. Can we consider that uh, they were given the mercy of the Lord to be born here, but at the same time, due to heinous acts committed by some people, they left the movement. 
and how can we equate that? Like, how can we explain that? Yeah, I mean, how can we explain what specifically, though? How we can explain that they were born in the in the movement because due to their uh, pious, pre previous pious activities, they were given the chance, okay, now you're born here. You're born within the uh, family of devotees or aspiring devotees. But now, due to circumstances that happen around them or to them, uh, they left completely and they don't want to know anything mm -hmm. about Krishna consciousness. How can we explain that when, and in terms of the philosophy? One explanation is that, you know, Kali, you know, the influence of Kali or Kali personified, does, does Kali personified exist specifically? Yes or no, that's another issue. But like, you know, we do hear, we do talk here about the, you know, Kali in the first canto of the Bhagavatam, right? Who's being chastised by Yudhishthir Maharaj or Parikshit Maharaj, sorry, Yudhishthir or Parikshit, I forget. Um, so, and, and we understand that Kali, you know, tries to stop, like in the Chaitanya Mangal by, by Lochandas Thakur, there's actually a scene, right, which has has been actually portrayed in dramas, in ISKCON dramas a lot, where there's Kali and then here's his, his like his associates like lust and greed, you know, and they're like celebrating that they've been able to, you know, influence the planet. And then, you know, the Sankirtan movement comes through and ah, you know, and, and especially this boy Nimai, Nimai, he's spoiling the party. Um, but the idea being that, you know, Kali, Kali is trying to stop the Sankirtan movement. There's a struggle, right? Uh, I mean, we also hear this in terms of like, there's demons, you know, who, who have a lot of power and who, you know, the, the, the eternal uh, uh, fight between the devas and the, and, and the demons, right? As in, as in Mahabharata and, and, and so on. And so we could say that, you know, the, that the, the, the forces of Kali really attacked, attacked, um, at, at, at a very vulnerable place, which is, you know, our, 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 our children in our movement. Can, can, can we say, not to argue the point, but it, because if we blame, blame Cali, then we are not blaming the individual living entity, pre previous uh, bad activities. Oh, the kids, or, or the kids themselves, like having mm -hmm. to suffer their own, and that's a reality also. We can't deny, you know, Tatenu Kampam Susamikshamano. So, you know, nothing happens by chance. So, yeah, you know, what was our, what was our uh, lack of, of, of taking responsibility in terms of our dharmic responsibility towards those kids? But in spite of all protective measures, if some tragedy happens, our philosophy does say that, yeah, that, you know, they, that, that there was some karmic reaction that was coming to them. That's our, also our philosophy, right? Uh, right, because the 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 the, uh, the first statement in which is by the by is by Kali Kali Kali's doing is like it's like the Christian theology that oh the the devil made me do it or Satan is the is the is the one causing the problem. I mean. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like those, 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 like rapists or those kids, those people who took advantage of of whatever of of their position or and hurt our children and stuff. It doesn't, you know, the fact that it's Kali and and Kali's influence doesn't indemnify indemnify them from from the reactions of their sins. Doesn't take away, you know, their free will, which they use in the wrong way to hurt Vaishnava children. So I don't think both are incompatible. You know, just to say saying that you know yes yeah, the influence of kali and kali is doing this doesn't doesn't take away any sort of responsibility or or weight karmic weight from those who who perform those bad deeds okay that, that sounds that sounds good i just wanted to hear your your opinion yeah so let, let's have the next reader um who hasn't read yet um Vitali Prabhu, do you want to read this paragraph here with the regulative principles? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the regulative principles uh, are such as that uh, one who follows them 
is uh, promote from the platform of uh, creative activities uh, to the platform of uh, transcendental knowledge. After many, many lifetimes of uh, cultivating transcendental knowledge, uh, one becomes perfect when he surrenders unto the Lord. This is a general procedure, but one who surrenders at the very beginning, as uh, rec uh, recommended in this mantra, at once uh, sur surpasses all preliminary stages simply by adopting the devotional attitude. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 1866, uh, the Lord at once takes charge of such a surrendered soul and frees him from all the reaction, reactions uh, to his sinful acts. There are many sinful reactions involved in karma kanda activities. Uh, whereas in Jnana Kanda, uh, the path of philosophical development, the number of such sinful activities is smaller, but in devotional service to the Lord, the path of bhakti, there is practically no chance of incurring sinful reactions. Because a devotee of the Lord attains all the good qualifications of the Lord Himself, what to speak of those of a Brahmana, a devotee automatically attains the qualification qualifications of an expert Brahmana, authorized to perform sacrifice, even sought the no. devotee. No. Yeah. No. Though, though as a devotee may not have taken his birth in a Brahmana family, such is the omnipotence of the Lord. He can make a man born in Brahmana family as uh, degraded as a low-born dog eater, and he can also make a low-born dog eater superior to a qualified Brahmana simply on the strength of devotional servers. This makes me think of one of my favorite stories that um, um, I always forget his name, the proper disciple who lives in Iskon Vrindavan. Um, ah, I always forget his name. He's quite famous. He takes devotees around on Parikrama, uh, Dina Bandhu Prabhu. And he tells this story of how in, in one of the early days in Vrindavan, one disciple of Prabhupada went to one of the famous temples, one of the main temples of Vrindavan, where you have these Kas Goswamis who, you know, worship the deities there since generations. And uh, according to the story, he was standing in front of this deity. And then the Pujari uh, looked at him and said, oh, I see that you have a lot of devotion for my, uh, for my Thakur, for my Thakur Ji, as they say. And so I bless you that in your next life, you can take birth in Vrindavan in my family and worship this deity. You know the story? Does anyone has anyone heard the story? Okay, so so I'll continue. So according to him, according to Dinabandu Prabhu, so this devotee was really excited and he ran back to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, Prabhupada, who was in Vrindavan in his home. Prabhupada, I just got this blessing from this Pujari. He's blessing me that in my next life I can I can take birth here in Vrindavan in his, you know, in his family and worship the deity. And Prabhupada nonchalantly said, oh, I'll go back to that Pujari and tell him that Bhaktivedanta Swami blesses him that in his next life he think he can take birth in America and spread the Sankirtan movement. <laughs> You know, so I've heard this story. It's a nice story. So on the strength, and, on the strength, uh, of, on the strength of bhakti, you know, the lowborn can can become higher than a brahmana. And as a matter of yeah. fact, you know, serving Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement um, in the Western world, we could say, is is an even greater blessing, an even greater privilege than than worshiping a deity in Vrindavan. You 
So who who's next? Lila uh, Lila Lila Sarkar. Do you do you have the ability to read in terms of mics and all that, or um... <coughs> yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Since okay. the now wait, who's it? Is there is that someone in the background in your in your place? Yes, probably is there someone? Yeah, so maybe maybe because if it, if it's quite loud, then maybe for for all of us, it's better that someone else reads who who has a quiet background, right? Okay, you muted yourself again. Yeah, let's just let's just let's just keep you know let's do those who read. Let them be the ones who have like a quiet background, just out of respect for all the other devotees on the, right? Because if there's too much background noise, then it's, 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 a, it's a disturbance. Right, Lilar Sarkar? All right, well, he's not responding, so I'll read next. Oh, bro, I, I will read. Okay, go ahead. Now it's quiet. Yeah, Since no. the omnipotent, omnipotent Lord is situated within the heart of everyone, he can give <coughs> destruction to his direction. sincere devotees. Direction. Not destruction. Direction. Uh, sorry. direction to his sincere devotees by which they can attain the right path. Such directions are especially offered to the devotees, even if the devo uh, even if the desire if he something, desire, if, if he desires. No. As far as other are connect, concerned, God give sentence. Uh, sorry, it's a very hard word for me. Sanction. Sang sanction to the door only the ricks of the door but so, wait, wait, God, no, because for us to understand here god gives sanction to the doer to the doer in other words to the person who's acting god gives sanction in other words god gives permission god gives the green light to the doer only at the risk of the doer in other words Oh yeah, you want to eat fish or you want to, you know, eat meat or you want to have illicit sex or you want to reject me. So Krishna says, okay, I, I allow you to do it, but at your own risk. In other words, you will be responsible for the result. That's what Prabhupada is meaning here by saying that God gives sanction to the doer only at the risk of the doer. Okay, continue, please. But in the case but of... But in the case of a devotee, the Lord directs him in such a way that he never acts wrongly. The Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.42 says, uh, So, so you can just read the translation. Okay, please. The Lord is so kind to the devotees who is fully surrendered to his lotus feet that even uh, through the devotee sometimes fails into the entanglement. In entanglement of vikarma. Act, uh, act against the Vedic destruction. Directions. The Lord at directions. The Lord at once refrains such mistakes from Rectify. sorry within the heart. This is because the devotee are very dear to the Lord. So in the homework, you guys, you guys got it all right practically. Um, I was trying to get you, Prabhu, to to think of this verse, you know, Apiche Sudura Charo Bajate Mamananya Bak, you know, in, in 934. Even, even if one commits the most abominable action, um, 
if one is, you know, devoted to what, what's the actual translation? Uh, even if one commits the most abominable action, he is still to be considered saintly because he's rightly situated in his determination, right? And also, of course, there's uh, some other devotees among you, some others, you know, pre uh, pre presented that verse, Tesham Satata Yuktaman Bajatam Pritipur Vakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamamu Ya Upayantite and Tesham Ivanu Kamparta Mahamagyana Jamta Maha, those two in chapter 10, right? To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So here's the same thing that Prabhupada, you know, this verse saying the same thing, right? The Lord at once rectifies such a mistake from within his heart, right? So it's kind of like those two things, Apichetsu Duracharo and then also Tesham Satata Yuktanam. Okay, let me read the next mantra, uh, the next paragraph here. In this mantra of Sri Shopanishad, the devotee prays to the Lord to rectify him from within his heart. To err is human. A conditioned soul is very often apt to commit mistakes, and the only remedial measure um, to take against such unintentional sins is to give oneself up to the lotus feet of the Lord so that he may guide one to avoid such pitfalls. The Lord takes charge of fully surrendered souls. Thus, all problems are solved simply by surrendering oneself unto the Lord and acting in terms of his directions. Such directions are given to the sincere devotee in two ways. One is by the way of the saints, scripture, and spiritual master. And the other way is by the Lord himself who resides within the heart of everyone. Thus, the devotee, fully enlightened with Vedic knowledge, is protected in all respects. Um... Blake, are you able to read or are you still in your car? I can read. Okay, cool. I'm just going to close the door. Uh, I can hear. We can't hear you. By my educational procedures. Can you repeat that again? One can understand the Vedic. Oh, sure. <clears throat> Vedic knowledge is transcendental and cannot be understood by mundane educational procedures. One can understand the Vedic mantras by the grace of the Lord and the spiritual master. Yesya Deva or Deve Para Bhaktir Yata Deve Tata. Grow. Let me interrupt you just for a second here, just as for those of you who may not know, Jayadvaita Swami, in one of his lectures, he mentions that he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, what's the most important verse among all the Vedic literatures? And according to Jayadvaita Swami, Prabhupada told him this verse here, Yasya Deve Parabhaktir Yasya Yata Deve Tataguro Tasaiti Kataryate Prakashanti Mahatmana. Just so you know, as a you know, as a as a piece of of um, transcendental um, uh, what's what's the term information or or trivia. This is Prabhupada at least in one occasion said that this verse right here that that Blake is is reading here or is yeah echoing Yasya Devi Parabhati from the Shatashatar Upanishad six two three. That's the most important verse in all the Vedic literatures. Go ahead, please, Prabhu. Continue. If one takes shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, it is to be understood that he has obtained the grace of the Lord. The Lord appears as the spiritual master for the devotee. Thus, the spiritual master, the Vedic injunctions, and the Lord himself from within all guide the devotee in full strength. In this way, there is no chance for a devotee to fall again into the mire of material illusion. The devotee thus protected all around is sure to reach the ultimate destination of perfection. The entire process is hinted at in this mantra and Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 2, 17, 20 explains 
it explains it further. So here I have the, the actual um, section here from 17 to 20. And um, for those, here's, here's the, um, here's the Jaladuta prayers. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. So I see you. Did you change to, to Bhagavatam right now? Well, I did, right? The Bhagavatam is, is the Prabhupada is referring here is, is this section from verse 17 to 20 from the second chapter of the first canto. But I just wanted to show you before we go into it that Prabhupada actually quotes these verses in his um, in his famous prayers to Krishna on board of the Jaladuta, right? My dear Krishna, you are so kind upon this useless soul, but I do not know why you have brought me here. Now you can do whatever you like with me, but I guess you have some business here. Otherwise, why would you bring me to this terrible place? Most of the population here is covered by the material modes of ignorance and passion, absorbed in material life. They think themselves very happy and satisfied, and therefore they have no taste for the transcendental message of Vasudev. I do not know how they will be able to understand it. Uh, but I know your causeless mercy can make everything possible because you are the most expert mystic. And here we're coming to it. How will they understand the mellows of devotional service? Oh Lord, I'm simply praying for your mercy so that I will be able to convince them about your message. Right? All living entities have become under the control of the illusory energy by your will. And therefore, if you like, by your will, they can also be released from the clutches of illusion. I wish that you may deliver them. This is a really key point here. But by the wish, by the desire of the pure devotee, Krishna reciprocates and delivers souls. Therefore, if you so desire their deliverance, then only will they be able to understand your message. And here we go. Prabhupada quotes this. You see, he says, the words of the Srimad Bhagavatam are your incarnation. And if a sober person repeatedly receives it with submissive oral reception, then he will be able to understand your message. And here we go. He, he quotes those four verses or five. I mean, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, yeah. Starting with Srimatam Sukhata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, etc. Up to the, the last verse, Vidyateri Diagrantis, right? So Prabhupada, in, in that beautiful prayer to, pra, to, to Krishna on the Jaladuta, quotes these verses that, that Prabhupada is referring to here in the purport to 18th verse of Sri Shopanishad, right? Srimad Bhagavatam explains it further. And so, yeah, it's, it's a very, very important section, you know, for those of you like who are kind of new, like, I mean, relatively new, like Blake Prabhu or Lilar Sarkar or, or anyone else, like, you know, this section 17 to 20 from the second chapter, Canto 1, is, gives, you, gives us the whole process in a nutshell. Let's, let's just read the translations. Um, who was after me? Uh, Atavi, I'm sorry, um, Maduha Prabhu. If you want, you can just read the translation to verse 17, and then we'll ask Devaki Nanan Prabhu to read the 18, and we'll we'll go through 21. But now we, okay. we're starting with 17 here. Okay, Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, Super Soul in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of the truthful devotee cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotees, devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, messages, which are themselves, which are in themselves virtues when properly heard and chanted. You know, what's interesting as a side note, you see, it says here, right? The, the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages. So this is the condition, like Krishna is willing to clean the heart but he's willing to clean the heart of a devotee who has developed the urge to hear about him. Now, one may ask, well, how do we develop the urge to hear about him? Well, if you allow me, in verse 16, just before this 17, you see, it says, Hum, is there something else I can help with? <laughs> no, shut down, Siri. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, twice born sages, look. By serving those devotees who are completely free from all vice, 
great service is done. And here we go, Madhu Haprabhu. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the message of the Bhag of Vasudev, right? So we, we could say that this section actually really starts at 216, where, where Sutta Goswami is saying he's giving the, the, the secret for developing the desire or the urge to hear. And what is the what is that? How do we develop that urge? By doing what? By chanting Hare Krishna. Well, not according to this verse. According to this verse, 216, 1 to 16 says right here. By doing what? Oh, serving, serving, the, serving the devotees. Yes, by serving the devotees. By serving the, the ones devotees. who are <clears throat> the ones who are completely freed from all vice. Yeah. We're completely free from all vice. But we'll 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 be, you know, we'll be generous and give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> So, uh, Devakinanda Prabhu, would you like to read uh, verse 18? It's right here. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome in the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Now, this thing about almost completely destroyed... That's been discussed a lot. And so why why would it be like, is it, why does it say almost completely destroyed? Like why not like always completely destroyed or certainly almost completely destroyed? If, if anyone is going to say, Atavi Prabhu, you have something? Well, I guess because I could say that is the, the free will of the living entity. We always and, have free and will. And also the free will, the free will of the Lord too. He's not obliged. It's not mechanical. So, like, okay, that's that's the principle. But if Krishna doesn't want, he like he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to clean our heart. It's not like oh God, I have to now. I'm all powerful, but. You know, I'm no longer all powerful. So this this almost completely destroyed stresses like Atavi Prabhu Krishna Atavi Krishna Prabhu points out nicely. It 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 stresses the, the 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 free will, the freedom that exists, you know, on the side of, of the soul and also on the side of, of, of God himself. Atavi Prabhu, can you read number nineteen? Yes, Prabhu. As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effect of nature's mode of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire, and hankering, disappear from the heart. Then the devotee is established in goodness, and he becomes completely happy. Wow. And um, Vitali Prabhu, can you read number 20? Yep. Uh, thus established in the mode of unalloyed, unalloyed godness, the man whose uh, mind has been enlivened, 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 enlivened by contact with uh, devotional service in the to the Lord gains positive scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association. Hmm. Yeah. And then there's the 21, which is sort of the conclusion. Um, Nitai Prasad Prabhu. Thus the knot in the heart is pierced and all misgivings are cut to pieces. The chain of fruitive actions is terminated when one sees the self as master. It just reminds me here in this translation to this verse, like this is a 1978 version, but when you look at Prabhupada's original, original, original Bhagavatam that he brought from America, from India to America, there's a different translation even to this one. And 
and it's a wonderful translation and I, 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 um, I forgot though, so I can't, but I'll look it up. Good. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the, what Prabhupada says here, you know, the, 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 it, the, the nutshell. Um, Atavi Krishna Prabhu, since you, can, can you just finish reading this, uh, this last paragraph, which is basically a summary. We're back in Sri Shopanishad here, the last, the very last paragraph of the whole book. Okay, Prabhu has, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is itself an act of piety. The Lord wants everyone to hear and chant his glories because he's the well-wishing, the well-wisher of all living entities. By hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one becomes cleansed of all undesirable things. And then one's devotion becomes fixed upon the Lord. At this stage, the devotee acquires the Brahminical qualifications and the effects of the lower modes of nature, passion and ignorance completely vanish. The, devo the devotee becomes fully enlightened by virtue of his devotional service. And thus he comes to know the path of the Lord and the way to attain him. As all doubts diminish, he becomes a pure devotee. Mm. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purpose to Sri Sopanishad, the knowledge that brings one nearer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. Blake Prabhu, just to finish, can you read to us again the just the translation to verse 18? If you if you've got it. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Oh, my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh, omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances, falling on the ground at your feet. O oh, my Lord, please lead me on the right path to reach you. And since you know all that I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins so that there will be no hindrance to my progress. Jai. Shri Shupanishad Ki. Jai. Jai. All right, Prabhus. Well, look, we got two minutes left. Let me do a quick little, uh, like we started, a little kirtan with everyone muted. And then, um, and then tomorrow, you know, you'll get more information on, on, on the exam next week. Um, It'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, you, the questions that were given to you so far, hopefully you still have them and just go over those questions because a couple of questions from each of the verses uh, will be will be selected. So there, in other words, there won't be anything that you haven't gone over um, that's going to be presented. It's going to be right from those questions that were asked. Um, but more detail on that further uh, in, in tomorrow or the day after um all right nita in goranga nita goranga nita goranga nita goranga Nitai Goranga Gorahadi Nitai Goranga Gorahadi Jaya Sachinandana Jaya Sachinandana Jaya Sachinandana Jaya Sachinandana Jaya Sachinandana Gaurahadi Jaya Sachinandana Gaurahadi Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Sur Prabhu Pad Ki Jaya Sri Shupanishad Ki Jaya Prabhu, thank you for your Sangha. It was really inspiring. And um Hare Krishna. A great week. And we'll see each other next week for the test. And um, yeah, remember, we're on the right path and we're um, going back home, back to Gada, and we're getting a degree along the way. <laughs> All right, Prabhu, have a great week. My obeisances. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. 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 Thank